hey, let's say that you're thinking about buying a fully electric car, but you live in an area that gets cold in the winter, just like this. Or let's say that you live in a warmer climate, but you want to drive to an area that gets below zero to vacation or to visit family. And because of this, you're sort of on the fence about whether an EV makes sense or to stick with a gas engine. Well, stick around because in this video, I'll show you how EVs are a viable option in cold weather. And yes, I'll also talk about how much range reduction you can expect from cold weather driving. Well, for those of you new to this channel, I drive a Tesla long range Model Y that I bought new in June of 2020. And I drive this car mostly between Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Illinois. I've driven it in all four seasons, twice, in temperatures ranging from 105 degrees Fahrenheit that's 40 degrees centigrade down to minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 30 degrees centigrade. And in this video, I'll share with you my exact range impact, which may vary from EV to EV, particularly if you're looking at other EV models. And I should note too that combustion vehicles are not immune. It's just that people don't tend to think so much about range as much in a gas or diesel car, since these fuels are usually within a short drive distance of just about anywhere. So let's get right into it. First, I want to show something that I learned after buying my Tesla that's found in the owner's manual. If we jump into the charging section of the owner's manual, you'll see a brief mention about temperature limits under the high voltage battery information. In this section, Tesla cautions us about extreme weather effects of, on the battery. And for the Model Y, it states, for better long-term performance, avoid exposing the Model Y to ambient temperatures above 140 degrees Fahrenheit or below 22 degrees Fahrenheit for more than 24 hours at a time. So is this a hard limit that the car cannot be used in these extreme temperatures? Well, no. In fact, Tesla vehicles are very popular in the northern US, Canada, and Norway where temperatures routinely drop below zero. But it's a cautionary statement, more like a strong tip to help get the most charge capacity and range from the battery over the life of the vehicle. For those of us that live and drive in cold climates, a good practice is to keep the car in a heated garage if the outside temperatures are going to be extremely cold. And when that's not an option, the next best thing is to keep the car plugged in during extremely cold temps. In fact, this recommendation comes directly from Tesla in the range tips for cold weather found on the tesla.com website. Here we see that keeping the Tesla plugged in helps the battery retain some heat and uses the vehicle's charging system rather than energy from the battery to retain heat. I've also found that keeping the car plugged in helps precondition, which is really a fancy word for saying preheating the car's cabin and battery during the winter months. And this can be done either by scheduling a departure time on the charging screen or remotely via the Tesla app under climate controls. Doing this when keeping the car plugged in allows you to use the electricity from the plug and not drain the battery when keeping the car inside. So we've warmed the car overnight and preheated and defrosted it while keeping it plugged in. Now while this helps us get the most range in cold weather at the start of our drive, there are other ways that range is affected during the drive. But before we dive into that, if you haven't already and you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel. Now let's head inside the car where it's warmer and I'll show you a little more. So now that we're back in the car, I just want to show you a couple of things here on the screen. The first is what the battery will tell us when it's cold through the screen. So up here by the charge status indicator, we would see a blue snowflake icon and that would tell us that the car is unable to draw a lot of energy, a high rate of energy from the battery. And it does also tell us that the car is unable to charge the battery fast. Uh, how that also affects range is during regenerative braking. So when we're slowing the vehicle down, we don't capture as much energy back into the battery because regenerative braking is restricted. And we can also see that indicator here on the screen. So when I put the car into drive, uh, I do have a full gray bar right up here along the top. Notice that the bar is solid gray all the way across. And when the battery is cold, I actually see dots show up here on the left-hand side. So that means that the car is unable to go beyond that, and regenerative braking only is a portion of what it is when the battery is warm. And what that looks like, if we just go forward a little bit, you can see when we're drawing energy from the battery, you get a black status bar, and we put energy back in the battery, it turns green just like that. Uh, we weren't going very fast, so we didn't see a whole lot of green on there, but normally when we're going highway speed and we slow down, it will bring it all the way down to the left side here. So the other thing with regenerative braking is when we are not able to recover as much energy back into the battery, 
we're not getting as much range back out of the car when the car slows down. So that also reduces some of the efficiency that's normally built into electric vehicles with regenerative braking that adds to the range. We lose that during the winter months. So the next thing that I want to show you is right here underneath the trip section of the uh, display. And this is a series of trip meters. It does have two trip indicators showing here. And on the right hand side, we see the average energy in watt hours per mile, which is the efficiency of the battery. Trip B is a counter that I've never reset since I've owned the vehicle. And it shows that over 55,000 miles have driven, I've averaged 318 watt hours per mile in the car, which is an average range of about 230 to 240 miles. In the summer months, uh, this number tends to be right around 280 watt hours per mile, which gives me close to 270 miles of range. In the winter months, it drops down to an average of 380 to 400 watt hours per mile, which reduces the range down to the low 200 miles. And in fact, when it's very cold outside, like reaching those minus 22 degree limits, I will observe that the range of the car itself really struggles to get to 200 miles. And that's with the heater of the car turned down to 65, which is about as cold as I want to keep it in winter months and keeping the speed of the car at 65 miles per hour or less. Now, another way that we could tell how our efficiency is doing is to go to the uh, consumption page here, which is actually in the menu tray. So if we don't see it visible here, we just pick right here. And consumption will show up in a five, a 15, or a 30 mile average. We do average range or instant range for the projected range over here, but the number on the left is really what we're interested in. And currently over the last 30 miles of driving this car, uh, it has been 30, 371 watt hours per mile. So you see what, I, what my range has been doing uh, during some city street and highway drives over the last 30 miles. Now the other thing we can do with the vehicle is to set a charge time. So if we do a scheduled departure time, uh, it will allow me to set a time that I want to leave and that will actually bring the car up to the preset temperature here in the cabin before I leave for a trip and it also warm up the battery. So the car pulls that initial heating from the outlet in the wall and not from the battery as I start to drive. Now I want to share one other consideration in the summer and winter range comparison and that is each fall I change the tires which are on this vehicle now to winter tires uh, and these are the 19 inch aftermarket wheels that I use for winter driving. Now they're not as aerodynamic as Tesla's induction wheels and uh, will also affect the range as we drive in colder months. I estimate about 20 miles of range is lost per full battery charge due to this. But it is worth mentioning as a factor since many other car owners do change tires for better handling and traction in the snow. So is the overall reduction range a deal breaker for owning an electric vehicle in cold weather climates? My driving experience, as long as you expect it and have the charging options during extended drives, I personally don't think so. This Model Y is my primary vehicle and it's going into its third winter season. I've owned gas vehicles including trucks and SUVs and know that it's easy to push on past a gas station with a low tank because it isn't convenient to stop. Only to experience the same type of range limit concerns as with the battery powered vehicle and keep in mind that electricity is all over. Using apps such as PlugShare and ChargePoint or relying on Tesla's ever expanding supercharger network, it's relatively easy to find places to recharge when needed. I've also found that charging to full or a near full battery, preconditioning the car prior to departure, and driving at speeds at or below 65 miles per hour, that this car can easily go distances between charging without feeling concern or inconvenience. If you want to learn more about my experiences of owning a Tesla Model Y after two years, or you want to see a cost of gas versus electricity case study that I did, check out either of these two videos here. Feel free to leave a comment below if you want to add any thoughts that you think would be helpful for others. And I do appreciate you watching. Drive safe and I'll see you on the road. Ooh, cold out here. <laughs>